make fun of my mother for I used to make fun of my mother for speaking aloud and now I do these things. So I'm sure she's, <laughs> she's laughing. She's laughing somewhere. Um, so good morning again, everyone. Welcome to the, oh my gosh, how is it? Fourth quarter um, virtual um, leadership breakfast. We're so excited to have you all here as everyone is getting settled, as everyone is um, logging on, please do add to the chat your contact information. Um, so that when this, now that I've recorded the breakfast, I will save the chat at the end. I will share that link. This recording will go up on our YouTube page. For anyone who does not know that, we do have a YouTube page. Um, you can Google that and you will, or go to search us um, in YouTube and you will find a host of amazing videos. We did a live um, cooking demonstration um, with Hannah um, the, this fall, which was so much fun. We have um, our own Deb Gaishel did a wonderful lunch and learn on creating a social, um, a whole uh, marketing strategy social media, um, a digital marketing strategy. We've had a lot of great content. There's a lot of great content on there. So please, please make sure you use that resource. Some of those videos are also on our website, but our YouTube channel is probably the best place to get them. So again, I'm going to get started as, as people sort of pop on. So good morning. For those of you who don't know who I am, I am Lisa Dooley. I am the president of the SSWBN. I am so excited to be here this morning. Um, again, really excited about what we have been able to do as an organization, as a network over the past um, really 18 months, taking over from the amazing Allison um, Guido, who really led us through those early stages of the pandemic and how we are going to continue to be a vital resource. Over the past just couple of months, we have um, we have added a number of new members, and we are so excited for our new members to really become part of this organization. Um, you give, um, you get what you give. So please take an opportunity to come as often as you can to our both live and um, virtual events. So the four tenants of the of the network. For those of you who aren't familiar, it is contacts. That's why we're here this morning to make contacts with folks we don't know, learn more about them. Um, to um, collaborate. I've collaborated with a number of um, member uh, members in the network on um, other projects and other presentations. That's what makes us a vital and um, growing organization is our ability to collaborate. Um, we also believe in coaching each other. You know, there are some of us on here who may be newer um, uh, entrepreneurs or business people. There are lots of great resources um, within the network um, and all of the program that we bring forward so that we can coach each other. And of course, the one of the most important is of course community. Um, every quarter, the network chooses an organization, uh, a nonprofit. Um, in the community to support. Um, and, and we are so thrilled. So I'm going to turn it over to Vinny so he can tell you uh, more about, um, about Wellspring. So um, welcome, Vinny. Thank you. Thank you. All, and thank you all very much for, for having me. Uh, I'll start with an apology. Uh, our new vice president of advancement named Lindsay Simpson was supposed to, to be here. She's very excited to meet this group and, and be part of this group. Um, she is since Monday been down and out with I think everything but COVID, um, and she's just she's the, the poor thing is just hurting badly. So um, you get me instead. Uh, for those who don't know, Wellspring is uh, a multi-service organization located in Hull. Now we have a satellite site in Weymouth. Our mission is to provide support and skills to people facing challenges to their well-being to help them achieve independence and self-sufficiency. Everything we do is trying to get them moving forward. Um, on site and in Hull, we have uh, uh, Aunt Dot's Kitchen, was, which is our food pantry. We have a uh, thrift shop and furniture store. We have legal advocacy. We have counseling, we have community outreach, um, and we have an adult education program. And along with the adult ed education program is a job center where um, we train, P train students 16 and older to get their high set, which is most people know it as GED, um, uh, or we use a uh, diploma program with Hull Public Schools. We used to think that if we were able to get them their credential, um, it was a big success. And we don't look at it that way anymore that um, when they're getting their credential, that's the baseline for us. That's, that's assumed they're coming here. We're going to get them the credential. We're much more concerned on what comes next. Um, what are they going to do when they grow up, so to speak? Uh, are they going to college? Are they going into the work world? And if they're going into the work world, 
how can we facilitate that? We provide job skills program where we can train them on site in one of those programs that we just talked about to make sure they understand what it is to be on time, what it means to dress appropriately, some of the soft skills that some people just don't have if they've never uh, they've never held a job before. Um, and once they're passed through that, we're able to get them into uh, internships in the community. So if they show interest in culinary, we can talk to our restaurant friends. If they show interest in, in you know, whatever other um, vocation they're looking at, we can make contacts with some of our contacts to try to get them into a paid internship so they can get some real life experience, some real job experience, but also get some money in their pockets so they can see the, um, the benefit of getting out and, and working. Uh, all of those programs are supported by a transportation program. So if people need food, we pick them up and bring them to Aunt Dot's Kitchen, our food pantry. Uh, if they can't do that, we will drive the food to them and deliver the, the food. During COVID, we started uh, a program with the schools to make sure all of the kids that were on free and reduced lunch did, still had access to breakfast and lunch. Um, and all of our students in the adult education program are offered transportation. So although our classroom is located in Hull, we have students from Avon and Quincy and Randolph and other areas that there might be a, an education program closer to them, but the transportation barrier is too great that uh, if we're able to get to them and bring them to Hull, it's further away, but closer as far as transportation goes. Mm -hmm. So we try to, we try to, uh, we try to um, integrate all the services as best we can. Everything we do is through a case management model that we built that that works to, to that end that we'll get people coming in saying, oh, you know, all I need is, is food for the week and I'll be all set. And we've learned that that's probably not true. And if, if they're coming in saying, if you could just give me $80 to pay my light bill, my life would be great. Well, that's probably not true. But if you're coming in for food, we'll get the information on you and figure out why you're in the situation you're in. Maybe you're much more close to uh, to being fine than you think, or maybe you're hanging on the precipice and and, and bad things are coming your way that we can head off before they, they get here. So our case management model tries to integrate all of our services so we get at all the problem, not just, not just one. Um, we have a, uh, a fund called the Diane Edson Fund where we raise money specifically for client services, meaning rent, heat, electricity, kind of anything that'll keep people safe and warm in their homes. Um, and we use that very much as, uh, as part of the case management piece that we fold everything together. Um, again, we opened a, a satellite site in Weymouth. We're at 409 Washington Street in Weymouth, which um, if any of you are vapors, it used to be an old vape shop. <laughs> so we think we dressed up the neighborhood pretty well too. Um, both of our shop, both of our, our businesses, Weymouth and Hull, have a uh, thrift shop and furniture stores. So it's kind of a gentle entry point that people can come in. Um, they can shop, they can uh, buy secondhand items, they can donate secondhand items, but it's also a way for them to come in and, and test the waters and try to summon the courage to be able to step up and say, uh, what other services do you have? What day is the food pantry open? How do I access services? That kind of thing. So um, it takes the stigma away from having to walk in the big scary door to, uh, to ask uh, for help. Um, in Weymouth, we provide those services as well by, by appointment. Uh, staff that works in Hull is split between Hull and Weymouth. So legal adv advocacy, counseling, community outreach, uh, elder services are all available um, in Weymouth as well as Hull. Um, some of the new things that we've got cooking now is um, during COVID, as I said, we started programs with food delivery and we found the transportation access was so lacking, especially in certain areas like Hull, um, that we purchased a food truck. So we are now rolling with a, uh, a food truck that we prepare the foods, load it onto the truck and take the food to where people are. Um, in Weymouth, there's a fantastic uh, the Weymouth Food Pantry is a fantastic organization and they do what they call pop-up pantries. So three times a week, there are different areas in Weymouth. People go and get their weekly supplies and we're working with them. So right after the new year, we're going to be attending uh, one of their pop-ups on a weekly basis with a food truck. So we'll be able to get people warm, healthy foods while they're getting their food 
supplies for the week, but we're also bringing our community outreach director and our legal advocate. So on site at the Weymouth Food Pantry, we'll be able to offer kind of mobile services um, and get them into the integrated services that I, uh, that I described. So we're building partnerships with the Weymouth Food Pantry. Um, we have a great relationship with the town of Weymouth and also the South Shore Hospital. We operate a program now where the hospital identifies people who are suffering from uh, depression, anxiety, or elevated BMI scores, but also identify themselves as either hungry or food insecure. Uh, and then they pass them on to, to us. We develop uh, a food menu and we de develop a delivery service uh, schedule where we're able to get them food on a weekly basis with the hopes uh, that as we deliver food, as their hunger reduces, as, as their food insecurity is reduced, their depression and anxiety levels will, will be reduced. Uh, if we're providing nutritionally sound meals, their BMI could be, uh, should be lowered. Um, and that program has been in, in business now for six months um, and we're expanding starting next week because it's been quite successful. Um, and we're also expanding that with the town of Weymouth to do a very similar program that we can provide food for hungry and food insecure people who, have, who are facing language barriers. Um, in Weymouth, there are many, many languages spoken um, and some people can't access information to food uh, because of the language barriers. And we're working with the town of Weymouth and again, the hospital who does translation services to be able to get um, the information to people uh, and ultimately get food to people. Um, so there you go. <laughs> um, and I'll show you in a minute what my other obligation is. I have a, a, a son who goes to a program in the morning. So this eight o'clock time worked well. I, I greatly appreciate Lisa uh, making time to have me go forward because once this is done, I'm in the road to go elsewhere. And um, so thank you very much for, for listening. Thank you for putting up with me instead of Lindsay. She's much more compelling than I am. Um, and we really look forward to getting more involved with this group. I think it really works for us as we're, we're much more of a regional multi-service center now being in both Hull and Weymouth. And, um, you know, the perception before was we were a Hull organization and we're really uh, an entire South Shore organization. So thanks again for having me. I, I answer any questions you might have and I look forward to getting to know you. Thank you so much. I think, um, <clears throat> I think, you know, during this whole pandemic and certainly, you know, the phrase has been, you know, we're all in the same boat. And the reality is we're not all in the same boat. We're all in the same ocean. And there are lots of different boats out there, right? And and there are, you know, certainly groups and people and sectors that have been much more greatly impacted. So thank you for all the work that you're doing. And um, as someone noted in the chat, you know, we didn't know, like, again, we have a perception of what Wellspring does. I, you know, I live in Cohasset and, and I thought, you know, you guys were a donation center, right? And that's, that was what it was. So thank you for sharing that. So um, the first question that comes to mind for me is aside from a straight donation. So if we wanted to donate food to the food pantry or we wanted to donate monetarily to um, the funds, um, is there another way that our members or, or our organizations or our companies could um, best support your mission? Uh, financial donations are always in need, as, as everyone knows. Uh, that you can do uh, right online. We have a new website that we that we like. It's wellspringmultiservice.org. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do it right online there. Um, both shops take donations while they're open. They're open Tuesday through Saturday every week. Uh, we take lightly used clothes. Um, the, the shop is, uh, is our is our first program. The uh, Diane Edson was our founder. She's uh, she passed away 20 years ago, um, but she started Wellspring basically to have a place to go that someone could go have someone to talk to, maybe get a cup of coffee, maybe get a warm coat if needed. And that grew into a thrift shop, and then it grew into multi-service. Um, so you come to our shops now, and it's an opportunity, like I said, for a gentle entry point. But it's an opportunity to to give clothing and give warmth and uh, household goods and they can be turned around. Um, so the shop operates on kind of many levels of good. Um, so any any kind of uh, clothing, household items, furniture and things like that, you can call either shop directly if it's easier to bring it to uh, Weymouth or Hull, you can call either shop um, anytime. Um, the furniture piece is also, uh, we provide pickup and delivery service for furniture. 
So if you do have furniture, you can call directly and we can walk you through the process in terms of what we can and cannot take size and, and uh, condition and all of that. So we'll do the vetting on it, but we can also pick up and deliver. That's the, great. And the, and the food, our, the food pantry is open Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, but we take food donations anytime because we're always just a day away from, from serving. So um, any kind of food donations or food drives and things like that are more than welcome. And we turn it around. If we get a donation on a Tuesday, we're serving it on a, on a Wednesday. Excellent. Um, so as my work as a professional organizer, I often have clients that say, I have this chair, this bed, this, this thing, and I don't know what to do with it. And I think that we all want to do better. Right. And it's just, sometimes it falls apart for us because we don't know where we can um, donate these things. Right. So, so thank you for sharing that because I know that's going to be a wonderful resource um, for myself and, and I've got a lot of realtors on the call and a lot of um, local people because it's, we don't know what we don't know. Right. So it's not until we become educated, like, like you've been kind enough to do this morning that we, um, that we know how we can support. Um, before we let you go, Vinny, anybody else have a question or, or a comment or something they'd like to, um, to, yeah. Yeah, Pam, I know you're involved with Wellspring, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Vinny, thank you very much for um, joining us today. I was actually the one who nominated Wellspring for this quarterly um, um, donation. And I've been volunteering at your Weymouth store since September. And I have to say, I, I get so energized from being in that place and watching the people who come in to buy things, helping them, but what I really enjoy the most is the team that you have there. And, you know, Angela and Linda and Mo, your employees, plus all the other volunteers mm -hmm. who help out. And I will encourage any of you to, you know, step into one of the stores. And I'm, I'm going to tell you that what started me with Wellspring was, um, in some ways, Lisa Dooley talking about how to get rid of stuff, <laughs> how to purge. <laughs> and... Um, I had occasion to do so starting with some of my own clothes. And then um, unfortunately this past July, my mother-in-law fell and ended up in um, assisted living, long story short. And we've been cleaning out her house and all of her clothes. So I've been a constant donation person. <laughs> every, every week I go in, I'm bringing box loads of stuff. And you know, I just wanna emphasize to everybody here Vinny says, lately use clothes. And I'm going to attest to that. I mean, we are very selective, right, Vinny? Yeah. On the type of clothes that, that come in. And, um, you know, we need, we need, they need to be clean. They need to be, you know, relatively current in style, but not necessarily because a lot of people, it, it doesn't matter whether things are in style if they really need clothes. And the prices are incredibly affordable for most people. So, um, you know, if you have things to donate, by all means, you know, stop by one of the stores and, and drop it off. It's, you know, I, I'm, I'm having a ball. In fact, I'm going in there this afternoon. So <laughs> well, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, thank you, Pam. And um, Pam's an example that we use volunteers as much as we can. And the volunteers really are the backbone of what we do. And they, they, they don't provide just the service, but kind of the spirit behind uh, behind Wellspring. And, and, right. you know, we, we don't like, we, we don't waste things. So as Pam said, if something comes in, it's torn or ripped or stained and it's not good enough to resell. We do recycle it through right. St. Vincent's and things like, so nothing goes into the dumpster. So we try to be as, um, as, as environmentally friendly as possible as well, but thank you for your service, Pam. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, Vinny. So Sheila, um, Sheila's um, logged onto the call. So Sheila is our uh, charity coordinator for the board and she does yeoman's work um, in finding and bringing um, all of this too. So one of the other things that we do for our um, quarterly charities is not just um, make a, a, a donation, but this is an opportunity for us to learn more. And so this is an important part of it. So Sheila, would you like to make a comment before Vinny has to hop off? Yes, I want to say thank you so much, Vinny, for being here. And I did have to drop um, our son off at school. So I logged on quick while I was driving back. Um, I said, oh, I can do it from the car. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> Anyways, so good to see you. And I saw you on um, the Weymouth um, cable and uh, however, the, whatever the those. Phyllis show. 
Yeah, Phil, let's call it, let's call it the Phyllis Show. It's the W E D C, and I shared it with Lisa because I said, "Oh my gosh!" And it was so good to learn some about Wellspring, and it just my jaw dropped because it's so amazing. And just hearing about the furniture too, because that's a big issue is trying to get it somewhere, and then like you know who has? A, I mean, my son has, um, my husband has a pickup truck, so sure we can get something somewhere. <laughs> but it's a matter of lifting and whatever. And I love that piece. And I have my car full of things. I'm just going to check your hours and definitely <laughs> get some nice things <laughs> over there. But thank you so much. And um, it's great, great. Um, I love the ribbon cutting too. I, I posted that in my blog. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's great. Thank we're you working, so much again. We're working on replacing the sign that the big storm a couple of weeks ago took our yeah. sign. So it looks like we're, you know, some people wonder if we opened and then closed a year later, but <laughs> the sign should be in very shortly. <laughs> All right. If anybody's looking for the Weymouth location, it's on Route 53, directly across the street from um, Chair Fair. Yes. Oh, yeah. And okay. next to, there's a there's a relatively new restaurant right next to it that is Santa Fe. So those are two landmarks that you can, you know, see before you turn into the driveway. And, and it's, an, it's easy to miss. <laughs> so we're going to be posting those videos and sharing them on our social media. Vinny, thank you. Thank you for joining us. This is, so this is my son. This is, this is my, my other commitment this morning. So thank, thank you for, for joining thank us. You, thank, thank you for you so moving much. me up on the agenda. <laughs> thank you. He's already famous. He was mentioned <laughs> on your video. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Vinny. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Sorry. I can't Bye, stay. No we'll worries. See thank you for being here. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye now. All right, everyone. So if you weren't all inspired and pumped up to do good this morning, I don't know what that's going to do for you. So again, um, I don't know. How do I follow that? So, okay. So um, I guess what I'll do is I will take a couple minutes just to, um, again, to kind of talk about some of the things that are coming up um, in 2022. Michelle has had a little bit of a technical difficulty, so I don't want to steal all of her thunder, but I will um, at least start. So for those of you who don't know, or, 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 you know, just give you a little reminder, the network was started back in 1991. So we have, we have transformed and come a really long way in terms of who we are as a network and really what our intention is. So as we continue to get deeper into our community service opportunities. So again, we, we make a monetary donation to our quarterly charity. But the other thing we also do is we are giving them an opportunity to share their message with us so that we can share it out with you. Um, we do have a first quarter charity um, chosen. Um, it's really exciting. It's called um, They Are Dogs for Better Lives, Dogs for Better Lives. So they are an organization that uh, free of charge provide um, uh, service dogs for um, deaf adults and children with autism. Um, and they have started out, I believe it's in Colorado. They are now here in Falmouth. They have a training. They've just purchased um, a, a compound um, down in Falmouth and they are going, they're getting their first crop of um, a puppies to train. So we'll be hearing from them next quarter. Um, but again, Sheila, who you just heard from is our uh, charity coordinator. So if you have a charity that you would like to, um, to sort of uh, bring forward to the board, we would love to hear from you. Um, we the, sort of the Mm, the parameters are like very much like Wellspring um, and our last quarter, or all of our charities is we are looking for, or we tend to focus on um, organizations that support women and children on the South Shore. Again, I, I you know, I've learned so much about Wellspring myself um, this morning, yeah, I'm hearing from Vinny. So, um, so it is an opportunity for all of us to um, just sort of add that um, as, as somewhere we can, we can support. Um, so coming up in 2022, we, um, we have something really exciting, um, and, um, Michelle's not here, so I'll just, I just got here. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, all of a sudden I'm like listening and it's just, I got this message and it's like, your microphone can't be picked up or your video. I'm like, what? I was like, bad timing. <laughs> bad timing. All right, Michelle. Well, this is perfect timing. So I'll let you talk about, um, what's coming up in, uh, 2022. Yeah, so like you just said, it's super exciting. I can't wait for it. So we have our virtual lunch and learn, which is on January 11th. Um, Nancy O'Keefe is going to be doing, I don't know if anybody's heard of human design, but basically um, based on like when you were born, like time, day, birthday, all that good stuff, 
she's going to teach us how we can actually utilize that for growing like abundance in our business and really actually like in our lives. So that's going to be super cool. And depending on how many people register, she'd like to actually do it for us live for different people. So that that's going to be really fun. So um, just want to enter. Yeah. I'm sorry, Michelle. I just want to add that um, Nancy O'Keefe is a business coach. She is a former president of the SSWBN and um, human design. Manessa, I'm with you, girl. I, I, like literally I could it's a rabbit hole. I could spend hours. Uh, Nancy brought it to me. I am in the midst of, of working on my own human design right now. But it isn't a way to look at the way you work and the way that you're and how to better integrate the way you work with how you're running your business. So that's really the bent, but we are going to have to limit the number of people um, for the lunch and learn. Um, so consider yourselves invited. Um, if this is something that, that this works forward, um, works in your schedule and you're interested, um, please sign up earlier because what Nancy's going to do is she's going to run your chart. It's a chart um, prior to, and then kind of walk you through, you know, not obviously not everyone individually, but um, it's going to be an opportunity to kind of give you an overview of what you're looking at on your charts. So it'll be super helpful. If, so please do sign up early. So again, consider yourselves lucky to be on this call. So you know what this is about. Um, and then obviously, if you want to delve into it more, you can work with Nancy directly. So I didn't mean to cut you off, Michelle, but it's fascinating. So I don't want anyone to say, oh, I wish, you know, right? Like, yeah. oh, I wish I jumped on that call. So put that on your calendar. And that is uh, Tuesday the 11th, right, Michelle? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, there's about five people registered so far. So it is up on the website if you want to go um, and sign up. So thank you, Lisa, because you know more about it than I do. So I appreciate that. Um, then we have our in-person focus coffee chat, January 21st. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the focus chats, um, Pat Lynch, one of our members runs those. And what she does is each month, we actually will have a different member um, have a topic. So Lynn Feingold did last, last uh, focus chat and we heard so many amazing things. So um, that is gonna be the 21st at 9.30. There's a time change. It was at nine before and it looks like 9.30 actually works better for people. Um, and that is in Kingston at Cravings. That is also up on the website. Um, I am in talks with a couple different people to finalize like what the topic is gonna to be that month. So as soon as I know, um, there'll be more details online, but you can go ahead and sign up in the meantime. Uh, then we have save the dates for February. So we have February 3rd is gonna be our business after hours. And the 18th is our focus chat also for coffee. And the idea with February, we were thinking about because it's heart month, there's Valentine's Day is really diving into like the heart of our business, the heart of, you know, why we do what we do, how we can use that and leverage and just continue to, you know, grow our businesses, help everybody kind of grow their, you know, their businesses. So you'll see those, um, Two events. So February 3rd is the business after hours, February 18th, focus chat. Um, those will be up on the website. I'm hoping uh, once I confirm with a couple people within like the week or so, so you can go and sign up for those and there'll be a little bit more detail um, details. And as Lisa mentioned at the beginning of the call, um, we'd love to hear from you about what types of things you want to hear, um, what you want to learn about throughout the year. And also if you have something that you want to present and you want to share to the group, please feel free to, you know, just shoot me an email, which is in the chat box, because I'm always looking for, you know, members or, you know, people that are thinking about joining that want to share themselves. So please, by all means, <laughs> whether it's just a focus chat or a lunch and learn or business after hours, um, I'd love to hear from you. So. Awesome. Thank you. And I think, you know, again, the focus chats. Um, so just so you know, we are out of an abundance of caution, um, except for the focus chats, which are smaller groups are going to be virtual um, uh, through the winter. Um, we made that decision, um, again, out of an abundance of caution, as much as we love, I mean, we, we had a lot of fun earlier this month gathering in person um, and <clears throat> out of an abundance of caution, we will be virtual except for those focus chats. So again, those will be limited. So please get those on your calendars. And again, when we do that, 
I'm using Marcy's word, intentional. Please don't just sign up because you wanna be the first to sign up. Please sign up because you think you'll be able to really attend it um, because we do have to limit those numbers, um, you know, both for the space and obviously for, for um, <clears throat> social distancing and all those other things. So yeah, so Michelle is working hard. So again, if you would like to do a robust presentation, you would like to do a lunch and learn, you would like to, you know, lead an after hours, you know, um, you know, business after hours discussion. Um, we can do a morning mixer. Um, all of those are wonderful. If you would like to get your feet wet and do something a little smaller, a little more focused, um, that's what the focus chats are for. So Pat Lynch, um, formerly of Bridgewater Savings, now with Bluestone Bank, now formerly, uh, now Bluestone Bank, um, Pat is there to facilitate, but Pat is that not to lead. So she's looking for people, as Michelle said, to lead those discussions um, and to really drive that. So if it's, again, a great way to sort of get your feet wet, um, if you'd like to, you know, to, to start to do more presenting, because um, this, this isn't going away, folks. So, um, so we also um, need to uh, all hone our presentation skills. So the next part of our is what I'd love to do is I would love to um, quickly go around the horn, see who, I'm sorry, I have boys, so we say those things, go around the room and, and have everybody um, introduce, you have, you know, a minute to introduce yourselves. If there is something that you are burning to see next year um, in our programming, shout it out. I'm going to jot some notes down. We as a board are meeting later today, um, and I will bring that, you know, these are all part of our discussions as we can continue to develop our programming. But prior, um, Deb has been kind enough to remind me it's time to do our friendly screenshot, everyone. So if you can, please turn your camera on. I'm going to ask Deb, um, our fantastic marketing pro, to um, Manessa, good morning, friend. Nice to see you. Thank you. If you can turn it on, you don't have to, that's fine. Um, and Deb is going to take our picture. Okay, everybody looking at your cameras, not at the screen. <laughs> big, big smiles. All right. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Let me see what that looks like. And fabulous. We're all smiling. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you all so much. All right. So I'm going to call on you in the order that I see you in my Brady Bunch screen. So I will start. Um, so again, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Lisa Dooley. Um, in addition to being the SSWBN president, I am a professional organizer. So as I mentioned to Vinny earlier, um, really what I help my clients do is um, let go of the things that are holding them down and holding them back from living the life that they want to live. Sometimes those things are physical, um, like the pots, the pans, the clothes, the furniture that just no longer fit into their lives. Sometimes it's emotional and psychological. Sometimes it's paperwork. I do all of those things. So if you know someone who's really struggling to move through a transition, um, a downsize, an upsize, a move, um, you know, that sort of thing, um, please do keep me in mind. I work, you know, Quincy to Cape Cod for the most part. So thank you for that. Um, really what I am excited about in our programming for 2022 is human design, man. I have jumped with two feet into this rabbit hole and I am super excited for it. And I'm also excited because um, I know we're, we're talking, um, Michelle's talking to a couple of people talking about um, sort of how to do a, a renovation project. And I have so many clients, right? Everyone is, seems to be building and renovating in this very, very hot market. And it, I'm really excited to hear some of that. Um, and I'm, I'm excited that the focus chats are back. Um, you know, it was something that we sort of held off with for a while, but Pat is um, able to run those for us. So we're super excited for, for the focus chats because they've always been one of our most um, uh, most appreciated items and people really do enjoy that. So I'm going to my left to the amazing Donna M. Schweiler, who is our VP on the board. Uh, Donna is um, stepping down. We are so sad to see her go, but so happy and so grateful for all that she has done for us. So no, also, if you would like to be part of the board and would like to join us, please do reach out to me as well. So Donna, good morning. Good morning. I'm Donna M. Schweiler. Um, I'm a Mary Kay Beauty Consultant. I've been for 10 years and I'm all your needs, skincare, body care, um, gifting for the holidays as well. Um, you need personal imaging, that's me. Um, I also bring a lot, so I still wanna stay around and help out when I can on the board um, behind the scenes. Awesome, thank you. Thank you again, Donna. Um, Lynn Feingold, good morning. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, Lynn Feingold, virtual assistant. And um, 
I've been in touch with a lot of clients this week who are kind of wrapping up uh, 2021 and um, preparing for the new year. So if that's you and you're looking at um, the whole mess of stuff that you're trying to figure out what to do next, what where you should be spending your energy, um, I invite you to contact me and have a little chat. Um, there might be something that you can spin off that I can um, help you uh, work on and get it, just get it done for you. Uh, as I say, bring me your chaos. Thank you. Find Thank the you. virtual assistant. Yeah. So if anything the pandemic has taught us, it is that um, we do not be, need to be sitting at a desk next to each other to get something done. So Lynn, um, Lynn has created a amazing, amazing business. Um, doing the things that we don't want to do, but she's really good at. So thank you, Lynn. And Lynn is also our uh, member coordinator on the board. Um, and we've been so, so lucky to have her. Uh, Dr. Bonnie Wims. Good morning. Good morning, <laughs> Dr. Bonnie. It's nice to see some of you when I was at the conference last mm -hmm. month, but yeah, everything's still kind of uh, up and down with that. Um, I am a uh, psychologist and I work exclusively online, which um, I started doing in 2012. So um, it was kind of an accident that I fell into the online work, not the psychology I, I studied, I promise. Um, and it's just been phenomenal. Um, I kind of had the perfect COVID business model by accident. So I work with people on their schedule and much more flexible with time I have weekend appointments, evening appointments, but also people can talk to me from the comfort of their own home, sitting on their own sofa. Um, and I really find that I think people feel much more comfortable that way. Um, COVID has really brought a lot of clients to me that have been isolated or uh, challenges with relationships as a result of um, the lockdowns and the different ways that we have of existing right now. So. It's uh, a service I love providing and um, yeah, I love my job and I'm happy to be here. Unfortunately, I have to jump out at nine, but I wanted to pop in and wish you all a happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, talk about someone who is way ahead of the curve, right? With telehealth. So uh, Dr. Bonnie, thank you so much. And again, same as with Lynn, we, you bring an opportunity for us to, to, to get the help that we need. Um, and I don't have to be sitting in your office. I don't have to drive there and sit in your office, although it was lovely to see you at the conference. So uh, we hope to see you in Boston again soon. Um, yeah. Thank you and happy holidays to you. Um, Michelle, good morning. Good morning. Um, I think most of you know me, but again, I'm Michelle Werdeman. Um, I am the event chair and I am also a certified life, weight and career coach and certified financial planner. Um, I'm just gonna take this time to actually share with you what I have that's coming up in January, which I'm super excited for. Um, it is going to be a 2022 um, vision to reality workshop that I am hosting at Adria uh, restaurant down in East Bridgewater. And what we're gonna really do is, um, so there'll be lunch, you're gonna get a life design workbook um, in true me fashion. Champagne will also be provided because it's time to toast a new year and just kind of like a fresh start I like to think about it as. But um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create craft and really just customize um, your visions in terms of like what you want to, bring like a great life to like an extraordinary life. So whether that's with your relationships, your personal wellness, um, your career, whether you wanna, um, you know, change careers or you just wanna just kind of make your own business um, that, that much better, uh, we're gonna be focusing on that. And we're gonna really dive into what your strengths are, what your core values are and use those to get you through any obstacles because obstacles will obviously come up at some point. Um, keep going when motivation is down and then also uncover what your limiting beliefs are like we have all these limiting beliefs that a lot of times we don't really even know we have them um, so yeah so I'm excited about that and it's January 23rd I'll put um, a link to the Eventbrite if you want to sign up and seats are limited just because I want to make sure that it's it's an interactive workshop so I want everybody to be able to you know have enough time to dive in. It's three hours, so it'll be 12 to three. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. 
Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Um, <laughs> Michelle, again, is our um, an amazing, in addition to being an amazing life coach, is also um, our events chair for the board. So again, if you are looking to host an event or you have a topic you'd like to cover, uh, please do reach out to Michelle W. Michelle Lavangie, good morning. Good morning. Hi, this is my first time. Um, so I am a holistic Reiki nurse and I own Sacred Holistic Healing in Pembroke. Um, I do flower essence therapy. I do angel readings and Reiki and body work and sound healing meditations and all things holistic and spiritual to help people relax. And really, I try to help people connect to their own higher power and their own clarity and empowerment. That's my goal to teach tools to help people to help themselves really. That's wonderful. Thank and welcome. You. Michelle is a new member of the uh, of the network. So welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you. Um, if there was ever a time that we needed you and we needed Dr. Bonnie and um, it, it is now, right? Because I think that so many of us during the pandemic of struggling with anxiety and depression and isolation and, and getting recentered, I think is the best thing we can do um, for ourselves and frankly, our businesses and everyone around us. So thank you. And we're so excited to have you here. Um, I'd be happy to help in any way I can with a talk or, you know, I don't know how it works because I'm new, but just count me in. Okay. All right. <laughs> Michelle and Michelle, I'm going to have you, you gals connect and we can have you do a talk. That sounds like a wonderful topic. So thank you so much. Uh, Lori Medeiros, good morning. Hi, it's funny. Um, I thought you'd pick me because I'm the polar uh -oh. Oh, true. in the mortgage industry, which is neither. So <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm Lori with Fairway Mortgage, and I'm a licensed loan officer in Mass in Rhode Island. Um, you brought up renovation is hot right now. Um, we have great renovation products. So if you have any clients that um, have equity in their home, they don't want to move but want to add on to their home, they could borrow. Um, we have great products for them to, to, to get that money they need to do renovations. Um, this group has been fantastic. For those of you who are new, I, I wish I could attend every single event because I always get something out of it. So thank you. Um, I don't have anything to offer as far as an idea at this point, but if I do, I'll, I'll be sure to email the board. Thank you. And Lori actually did a wonderful presentation for us back in October. September, right, Lori? We um, we right, were outside. We, did some, we were outside yeah. on the deck, which was lovely, and did a wonderful um, presentation for us on the importance of clean credit, um, and which is so important because we think credit just comes into play when you're you're uh, buying a home or uh, refinancing, and it's it's literally everything from your auto insurance to your cable bill. So, um, so thank you. That was great. That was another great live event. So that was a really good one too. So thank you. So um, uh, in a great segue to um, to construction and uh, transitions. Richard, good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Richard Conley and my head's swimming with all of these wonderful ideas that you people have for your businesses. I, I just am in awe of, of how everyone seems to be able to take certain parts of their background and put it into a whole new career. I did the same thing. I, I'm an educator. Um, I'm a writer. I have a background in construction and I now call myself a remodeling construction consultant. My focus is putting the homeowner in charge of the project, not the contractor. And what's very exciting for me is to be a part of the organization because I joined it when it started so many years ago and then I just sort of fell out of touch and I, I really don't remember why. But upcoming uh, for me is um, I'm doing a remodeling class at um, sponsored by Tufts uh, Library in Weymouth. It's six weeks um, and it's open to anybody, it's free. We'll have subject experts there, including structural engineers, I think, and um, building inspectors and so forth to help uh, people understand what they need to know before they do anything. And I'm really looking forward to it. And then I was also uh, recently on uh, Phyllis's show and I had a great time and she's really wonderful. So thank you for having me here. It's, it's great fun for me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and welcome back as, um, as Allison said. So yes, yeah, so um, Sheila was nice enough you for um, to forward me some of the videos, both um, so from our, those um, from on your presentation on your um, uh, televised as well as Vinny's. And so I will be getting those up on social media um, over the next few days. So, um, and then. Can I, can I just add one thing? Uh, yeah, the, other, the other thing that members might want to take a look at is uh, radio entrepreneurs, 
Yes. Um, it's a wonderful organization and uh, they've done me a couple of times and it's great fun and it's, it's for business people and yep. uh, it's free. So if you can get that out too, that would be helpful. I will. I, if you could see the list of things to do, um, <laughs> it will be a robust um, a week after the first of the year for me as well. But thank you. And thank you for sharing that because I think it's those things is I, you know, some of them might not know that radio entrepreneurs is out there. So it's an opportunity for us to, again, to, to get ourselves and our businesses out there um, to a different audience, right? This is wonderful, this group, but, you know, we want to broaden that. Um, as, as my friend Deb would say, um, how many eyeballs can we get on that? So, um, and Shannon would say that as well. So again, continuing in our uh, building theme, Allison Plato. Good morning, Allison. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. It sounds weird in my ears. <laughs> Hi, I'm Allison from Almar Building Remodeling Company. We, uh, we do residential remodeling, everything from windows and doors, kitchens, baths, right through design, build, um, additions, new houses, those kind of things. So um, small to big. We've been in business for 60 years, I'm a third generation owner. And um, we in 2022 are moving our office, not far, but just down the street to a space that's twice the size. So we're really excited and uh, have some exciting projects happening for 2022. So um, funny side note, I also do a podcast with um, for my with my husband about typically we do um, couples who run businesses together, but in 2022, we're going to talk, hit some more business topics. So if anybody has something that they think would be a good fit to share, I've already talked to Deb and Lynn and Michelle about getting them on the show. So um, yeah, let me know. Thank you. And yes. um, Allison was kind enough to have, uh, she and Craig were kind enough to have me on the show. Um, so again, one of the things that I love about the network is I needed work done at my house. The first thing I do is I go to the I go to the member directory to see who I know, right? I need some marketing materials done. I need some, you know, I, I need gifts. I need, I need something. The first place I go is to that directory. It has never failed me. So as I search for my new forever home and I design it in my head, I'm thinking Krista Mana could help me design the perfect home. So Krista, good morning. Good morning. I am Chris Damana and I'm the owner of KR Architecture and Interiors and we do both residential and commercial design. Um, one of our focuses is uh, designing homes for aging in place and um, I'm actually helping a client right now where their father is wheelchair bound and they would love to be able to have him in their homes so that they can, you know, take him to appointments and be able to get him in and out of the house with ease. And there's a lot that goes into designing a home for someone who has physical ailments. Um, I also specialize in office design for those who are neurodiverse. Uh, if, for those of you who don't know, uh, neuro, if you think that you don't know somebody who's neurodiverse, one in seven people are neurodiverse and may not necessarily know that they are. So when you're talking about designing spaces, uh, you have to keep those individuals in mind because guaranteed you're going to have somebody who is neurodiverse in your office. So um, once again, KR Architecture and Interiors, um, Chris Mana, thanks. Thank you. And, and Christy, you're right. We don't, again, it goes back to the sort of, we don't know what we don't know. And until you come up against, um, you know, someone with mobility issues or, you know, uh, neurodiversity issues, retrofitting um, a home and, or, you know, creating that right space is everything, right? This is, this is what, there is nothing more important than feeling safe, secure, and, um, and peaceful in your own home. I'm, I'm singing, I'm singing to the choir on this one, but, um, thank you for bringing that forward because, um, knowing that, that that's what you focus on is super helpful, um, for all of those of uh, us here. So I'm going to go to our resident author, Lisa Braxton. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yes, I'm Lisa Braxton, the author of the award-winning, oh, I fuzzed out my background, the award-winning The Talking Drum. And um, I've had a lot of fun with uh, doing events. My, my book came out uh, last year. Well, most of my events have been virtual, a few in person, and recently the Weymouth Tufts Library hosted me, and I did a drumming demonstration. I learned drumming to write one of my characters in the novel, and 
I drummed and lost the beat and embarrassed myself, but the audience was just so forgiving of that, and we had a great conversation about my book. So I just wanted to say that I'm looking to do more book events uh, at libraries or at, if you have a book club and you're interested in having an author, a local author, come and chat about her book and, and uh, read the book, I'm available, and I, I put my information in the chat. And just having a lot of fun with, with, with Zoom, these alternative ways that we're connecting with people. And um, I'd love to talk to you all about my about my book and my book journey. Thank you. Thank you. We're we're so lucky as a group to have so many. Well, we're all talented in our own ways, of course. Um, and um, Lisa has a recent book. Uh, Mary Ford um, has a book. Lisa, your book is available on Amazon. Yes. Yes, Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com, Target.com, but, but Amazon, the easiest way to get my book, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Mary Ford, um, Ruth Rooney, myself. Um, so if you are interested in, there's still time, folks, to get something, <laughs> something a good book uh, for someone for the holiday season. So I am continuing to go around my screen. Sheila Barber, good morning. Hello, Sheila Barber, Barber Home Inspections. I run our home inspection company and my husband um, uses his over 35 years in the trade to go out and we just um, help our clients. So uh, a realtor or homeowner may call up and we're, we're there for them to get them right through. Um, from beginning to end of their home inspection, um, um, little things. I'm answering the phone. And thank you so much. The phone, a live person. They, you know, they, they hear what's on the other end and we're there for them. So, um, yep. And if you're looking for an easy fix for your nails, I do do nail polish. I got this nice red on it's sparkly and fun thank you thank you Sheila. you were breaking up a little bit but Sheila's business is um uh it's it's amazing so if you've not tried color street um and you would like to please do reach out to sheila because um anything that makes my life easier that's my motto these days um i am going to go to and don't forget i know people are having to pop off because they've got other commitments but we are going to be recording this call so you can um, you can always pop on and we're going to went for Marcy's awesome tips on intentional eating because it's going to be there on the YouTube channel. Um, Lynn Feingold. Oh, we, Lynn, Manessa. Good morning. I've lost my place. Hello. I am usually much more energetic. I'm not laying here because I am sleepy. I actually have fibromyalgia and I'm having a migraine. And just today is just one of those days where you're like, I'm not getting out of bed. Um, but I didn't want to miss it. Um, and it's actually quite timely because uh, my, um, you know how business owners are often overwhelmed with all the things that they need to do to run a business. It's really, really hard. And many of us have like added on more and more things to do, but don't know what we can get rid of. And if you can imagine for an able-bodied uh, neurotypical person, it's probably, you know, it's, it's fine. But if you are someone who suffers from a chronic illness or you're a caregiver to someone who is suffers from a chronic illness, or if you're a mother, um, it's, you just have a whole lot more going on and tend to get overwhelmed a lot easier. So one of the things that I do is I work with women business owners who uh, are either caregivers for chronic illness or have a chronic illness to eliminate about half of what they do, because you're doing, I guarantee everybody in here, including myself is doing about 50% of the work you're doing is junk that you can get rid of right now. And then you'll be able to get 50% of your day back from your business so that you can run a successful business, even like as a lot of us who are chronically ill feel like, well, we're just SOL, we can't be successful because we have a different framework. You can be successful, you just have to work around it and I have systems that help you do that. And I just wanna say that I'm new and I wanna participate in all the things, but uh, hearing all of you talk, I'm not gonna remember it all right now, but I know that there's at least six of you that over the course of the next, like, I want to reach out to so many of you, especially Dr. Wims. I have so many people I want to send in your direction because it's so hard to find a therapist right now. The fact that you're seeing clients is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Manessa. And Manessa, um, so the way Manessa and I got connected is I put a, a shout out on our Facebook page because we needed help with the SSW band Facebook page. And and this woman came forward and, and helped us. You did for me in 10 minutes what it would have taken me literally weeks to do. So thank you for that. And thank you for joining us. We're so excited. Um, so in the theme of, of businesses that help other businesses, Dr. Shannon Donovan. Good morning, Shannon. Hi. <clears throat> oh, good morning. It's only uh, barely 7 a.m. in Santa Fe, so 
<laughs> it's a little early for me. <clears throat> but anyway, so the first you're the first people I've spoken to. Um, so yeah, I do all things digital marketing. So uh, if you need a website built, if you need it upgraded, if you just need content written, or you need it to show up higher on your um, on the Google rankings, uh, call us. Um, we, we work with social media, uh, Google My Businesses, um, and anything that we do Google ads, Facebook ads. So anything digital marketing that you need to get your company found, um, you can come see us. Thanks. Thank you. And Shannon is also a member of the board and Shannon was the very kind and generous board member who was our um, liaison to the Cheshire Women's Conference, um, which was an amazing day, um, day and a half, I should say. So, and, and again, staying with the theme of businesses that help other businesses, Eileen, I see you. Um, I recently, I also sit on another board and we were transferring our uh, QuickBooks account and the thought terrified me, literally. Um, so I called the person that I knew who could make this so much easier for me and it was Eileen. So thank you for that, Eileen. So if you need a QuickBooks expert, this is the person to call. Good morning. Hi, hi guys, I am here. I'm sorry about the camera. I'm actually multitasking a little bit in that this is my morning self-care time where I like to exercise. So I'm a little bit sweaty and gross. Um, <laughs> But anyway, um, I'm, as uh, Lisa said, I'm Eileen Borders. I have my company called On Time Bookkeeping. I'm a professional bookkeeper for small businesses, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, whatever, um, both locally and across the country. So um, this is you know super busy time for me. And sorry to do the multitasking thing, but I've been listening to everything that you guys are saying, and you're all amazing, and have a lot of good stuff coming up next year. So that's exciting. Um, and yeah, I hope to participate a little more um, than I've been lately, but um, all, in the, all in the big plans for next year, so. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen. And as I said, you know, uh, there are, you know, I'm gonna just gonna echo what so many people have said this morning. As business owners, we, we tend to think we have to be, you know, you know, chief cook and bottle washer. And we do the tasks that we could be giving to Eileen or to Lynn or to Shannon or to Deb, who's going to speak next. Um, so there are great resources here to make you better at what you do um, so that you can go out and do those things. Um, so Deb, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Glad to see you. I, I'm complaining because it's so early for me, but then Shannon opens her mouth. I'm like, oh, I better just shut up now. <laughs> but um, my name is Deb Gageville. For those of you who don't know me, I am the owner and creative director of Message Artist Creative Group, and we are content marketing for small and mid-sized businesses and nonprofits. Basically, anything content, websites, blogs, emails. Um, we also do some branding and some book, mark, uh, book launch marketing, so new authors. Um, getting ready to launch a book or planning to even write a book. Um, yeah, anything content basically, really focused on helping clients tell their story, um, establish a nice uh, consistent voice and uh, brand messaging because that really does inform everything that goes out and helps you talk to your ideal customers. So that's, that's our world. <laughs> Thank you. Um, not only does Deb do that in such an amazing way for her clients, but she is also the marketing chair uh, and a member of the board and does so much for us. Um, so thank you. We're so grateful for all those emails. So all those emails, folks, um, are coming from Deb. She is working around, literally around the clock um, to, to get those done for us. So one of the things we did this fall, I, I mentioned that we did an interactive cooking class. So Hannah, thank you for joining us. Hannah led us in an interactive cooking class this fall. Um, so again, people say, you know, like, how, how does that relate to our business? It's the Social Women's Business Network. But being healthy, being well, um, really is part of who we are and, and, and keeping ourselves, you know, sort of balanced. So Hannah, are you there? I am here. I'm are. sorry. I have two toddlers attached to me. So <laughs> my camera's off, if that's all right. <laughs> of course it is. Thank you for joining um, us. Thank you. This is my first meeting. So um, it's nice hearing all of you guys. Um, but yeah, so basically I am, uh, I heal your mind, body, and soul while making dinner. <laughs> so um, my programs are virtual healthy cooking classes. Um, and my main focus is to help anyone replace any type of cooking or nutrition dread um, with an actual desire and inspiration to cook well um, so that 
you know, eating healthy can actually feel enjoyable and more intuitive so that come New Year's, like you don't feel like you have to cleanse away the holidays. Um, but instead, we kind of develop these automatic habits that you actually want to reach for uh, because they make you feel good and taste good. <laughs> um, so this, my programs are for anyone who want nutrition to feel easier or healthy eating to feel more automatic. Um, or just to surround yourself with people who raise your vibration. I have some really fun heart-centered uh, women in my group. So um, my next two programs start in January. One is eight weeks and the other one is four months and actually ends with a retreat uh, in Southern Italy. So if anyone is feeling drawn to that, definitely reach out. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Hannah, Hannah let us um, making this, um, you know, roasted squash salad and it was amazing. And again, it's for those of us who are not, don't not consider ourselves to be native cooks. Um, she did a great job taking the fear out of the kitchen. So thank you, Hannah. It was not only delicious, but it was fun. And that's really what eating. And oh, cooking should thank be you for you. You co-created the energy. So it was, it was a blast. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Pam Cunningham. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I can't believe I'm coming up on almost a year of being retired and I don't know where the year is gone, um, but I'm, I'm having fun and uh, keeping myself busy and looking forward to doing more volunteer work. I'm uh, being very thoughtful about what I want to do, but uh, one of the things I'm, I'm seriously considering is doing more with um, Wellspring in maybe a different capacity, including some of their um, GED program in adult ed. So that's a possibility. And then also, um, I'm not sure if anybody has ever heard of Shine, which is in, um, an organization that um, helps people um, in, you know, every town has a Shine coordinator, helps uh, people age 65 get themselves prepared and ready for um, applying for Medicare. And uh, you, you, know, you work with uh, single people, couples as they navigate the complexities of Medicare, which um, if anybody has, is there, probably not on this call anyway, um, it's very, very complex and challenging. So besides that, um, um, I actually just, I, I wish Lisa Braxton hadn't left because I wanted to let her know that I purchased her book and it's next on my pile of books when I finish the one I'm reading right now um, and looking forward to that. Um, so other than that, keeping, keeping very, very busy and what's going on um, on a personal level is I mentioned earlier that my mother-in-law had fallen and broken a hip and in July, and it's been, you know, an interesting challenge of, you know, getting her situated in assisted living, uh, which is never an easy thing to do, um, especially when she had tremendous independence. And I'll put a shout out again for the Two Sisters organization that um, absolutely positively helped my husband and me navigate how to get her placed in, first of all, a rehab, and then after that into um, a fantastic assisted living arrangement. And, um, you know, Michelle Werdeman was, I'm, I'm sorry, Michelle, um, uh, what's her last name? From Two Sisters. I'm blanking. Um, um, yeah. Me too. Anyway, yes, um, she, she was absolutely essential. And I highly recommend Two Sisters for anyone who has to go through these difficult decisions for an elderly parent. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Pam. And I think it's true. Again, you don't know what you don't know. And until you've experienced a certain situation, it's where do I turn? And unfortunately, we often, um, it's when we're in a crisis, right? Yeah, and I knew exactly where to go um, when that happened because I had spoken with her um, at various um, events, including yeah. a lunch and learn. And uh, she was very, very helpful. Yeah. Excellent. So, well, thank you. And thank you. Pam is a former member of the board as well. She was our secretary and a member of the board for very many years. So we thank you for that. Thank so you. Marcy Desmond, welcome. Thank you for being so patient this morning. We can't wait to hear from you about your business and, and tell us how I can stop shoveling sugar cookies in at 8 p.m. <laughs> Um, hi, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Marcy Desmond, and I'm a food empowerment coach, and my business is Marcy's Wellness Alternative. And I primarily help and support um, smart, busy women who struggle with emotional eating and yo-yo dieting. 
And, um, but under the umbrella of food empowerment, I also work with people who struggle with food sensitivities and allergies and anyone who basically has a, a, a struggle with their relationship with food and really needs to bring peace to that um, relationship and abundance um, to their lives around food. Uh, so um, I also, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, private coaching. I do group coaching. And um, I also love to go into organizations and companies and do workshops or um, presentations around this whole topic. So um, if you know anyone uh, who might be interested, uh, please send them my way. And I did put a link in the chat to uh, schedule a complimentary discovery call if anyone is interested. Thank you, Marcia. So uh, let me do a time check, Lisa. Um, how much time do you need once I'm finished? Um, why don't, if you got, can give us about 10 minutes and then give us a couple minutes for uh, Q&A and then anyone can reach out to you um, independently if they have a specific question. Okay. okay. I will, I will, I will keep it to 10 minutes. Okay, great. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, can you enable? Oh, sorry. Of course, screen share. No uh, multiple tests. I'm going to try that one more time. See if that works. Mm. Let's see. I wonder, let's see. I'm squinting. Sorry. Why don't I just put my glasses on? Okay. Um, uh, all participants. Huh. You want to try that again, Marcy? Yep. I got it. Thank okay. you. Oh, beauteous. Thank you. Oops. So why does this always happen to me? I always end up at the end, even though I started at the beginning. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Just That's to make sure everyone's awake. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to try to give you a different perspective today. So I'm not here to tell you um, how to have a smoothie for breakfast and a salad for lunch, even though that may be something that is helpful during this time for you. Um, but what I want to cover is, you know, how does eating become such a source of stress during the holidays when really eating should be about food and nourishment? Um, and how setting intentions can completely shift the paradigm and how to put intentional eating into practice this holiday season. I had hoped to do a little bit of a, an exercise with everyone and we'll just see if we have time for that. Okay, so um, again, mouse challenged, I have a new mouse. Okay, so I'm, as you're listening to this, I want you to sort of see if it sounds familiar or this is anything that's ever run through your head in the holiday season. I can't believe I ate all those cookies, Lisa. <laughs> oh no, Aunt Clara's coming. I mean, I love Aunt Clara, but she always brings candy and I'm not eating that this year. I have to be extra good this week because Oh, those holiday parties are coming up. So I really have to rein it in this week. I am not eating any sweets tomorrow. I'm done with the sweets. I better finish all this pie tonight. I certainly don't want it in the house tomorrow. No way I had time to eat breakfast or lunch today. I was just so busy running around Christmas shopping, doing this, doing that. Oh, I just give up. I'll get back to eating healthy after New Year's. Oh. I can't wait for the holidays to be over. Then comes the pressure of New Year's resolutions. So um, just really quickly in the chat, could you just share if any of this sounded familiar or this is if you've ever had any of these thoughts run through your head during the holidays? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, it's, it's very, very common. And it's, you know, unfortunately, when you look at all of this, what do you hear? Shame, guilt, fear, doubt, and um, really, it's because the holiday seasons can be so overwhelming. I mean, we're all busy people normally every time of the year, 
but it really ratchets it ratchets ratchets up a notch during the holidays. So as I said in the beginning, I'm a food empowerment coach. A lot of what I do is look at where people are giving away their personal power. And when you give away your personal power, you are diminishing the abundance in your life. And a lot of this anxiety and stress and doubt and fear comes from the fact that you're giving the power away um, to Aunt Clara, to the food, to the situation, to the anxiety. Um, so, and being intentional is the opposite of giving away your power. You really, if you look at, think about all those um, comments I made, there are situations where you just don't feel like you're driving the bus. You know, you just, it's out of control. It's running away from you. Okay, so what it means to be intentional is basically an aim or a, pur a purpose. It's what you intend to do. So when you do something with intention, you are making a choice, you are doing it intentionally, you are taking charge um, and being, being the driver of, of your life. Okay, so when I think about um, opportunities for intentional eating during the holidays, I always kind of like to put things in categories so they're a little easier to think about. <clears throat> and the four categories um, that I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna show you some examples of you know, my personal intentions and ones that I think are particularly powerful in this area. Um, one is the obvious one, which is food choices. You know, how are you making food choices? Another is personal boundaries and personal boundaries, setting personal boundaries are a way of protecting yourself, you know, to make sure that you're not giving that power away and that you are doing what you need to do to, to stay in charge of your life. Um, another is mindset. You know, Michelle mentioned limiting beliefs before. We have so many limiting beliefs that we're not aware of. Um, that actually drive our actions. And a lot of those, the, a lot of times when anxiety is very high or we get very busy, our limiting beliefs can take charge. And that's another place we can be giving away our power. And then lastly, self-care. And you might say, well, what does this have to do with eating? But <clears throat> if you, there are a lot of areas of self-care where if you're not um, ensuring that you have the right self-care practices in place, it can really throw off your eating and it can, it can, it can just really um, disrupt your whole, uh, your nutrition, your health, your hunger cues, all of that. So let's look at some, sorry, if I'm going really fast, I'm trying to respect the time. You're doing great. Okay. Um, so let's look at some example intentions and we'll spend some time on this page. Um, so we'll look at food choices first. So as I said, when you think of intentions, you're not coming from a place of this is bad and I have to fix it. You're coming from a, a place of abundance and how a positive place, how can I best take care of myself? So in food choices, these are four examples. I will consciously choose what I really want to eat. And there's a lot of power in that sentence um, because a lot of times, particularly in the holidays, we're eating what we think we're supposed to eat. We're eating what someone else made for us and we feel obligated to eat it. Um, we're eating something because we're pressured into eating it or we're eating it because We've always done it that way on the holidays um, and we've never questioned to do it any differently. It's a habit. So I will consciously choose what I really want to eat. And if I really want it, I will have it and I will enjoy it. I will eat slowly and I will savor my food. So I love your example, Lisa, of you know shoving sugar cookies in your face because a lot of times uh, what happens is we're just, you know, we're in that mode and, oh, the, the cookies are here and I got, I got to get this done. And you just start mindlessly um, eating the cookies and you're not even really enjoying them. You know, cookies are, there's, you know, if you're going to eat a sugar cookie, enjoy it, savor it, taste it. And then 
I will honor my hunger and fullness cues. So I have one cookie. I have a party in my mouth. It tastes really good. I really enjoyed it. I have another cookie, still really enjoyed it. By that third or fourth cookie, or maybe the fifth or sixth, depending on how much you really like cookies and how hungry you were, you're probably not tasting it anymore. And you're probably getting full. And if you continue to shove the cookies in your mouth, you're probably going to feel a little sick. You might feel bad about yourself. So honoring your hunger and fullness cues. Um, personal boundaries. I love Aunt Clara. I'm so happy to see Aunt Clara. I don't want to feel bad that Aunt Clara is coming, but I don't want the candy she brings. I don't even like it. So I will say no to Aunt Clara. I will say it kindly. I will say it gently. I will not hurt her feelings, but I will protect myself and I will not do something I don't want to do just because she's brought candy. I will focus on my relationship with her and giving her my time and my love in my heart. I will not go to events that I don't want to go to. This is a big one. How often do we do things because someone wants us to or because we feel we're supposed to? If you really don't want to go to something, set that boundary. Don't go. Um, okay, for all of us busy people running our businesses, we're really good at getting tons of stuff done. We're not so good at asking for help. So I, this is one of my personal intentions. I will ask for help when I need it because I tend to take on way too much. <laughs> and then you get resentful and you're shoving sugar cookies in your face <laughs> to try to soothe yourself when that's not really what you need. What you really need is a little bit of help and a little bit more calm and time. I will not give in to food pushers. Food pushers come out of the woodwork during the holidays, right? Oh, have another cookie. Oh, please try this. You haven't had this yet. I grew up, my mother was a huge food pusher. I loved her dearly, but I really know the power of this one. And this is to me a very important intention that I set in my personal life. I will not give in to food pushers. And there's all kinds of beautiful techniques for dealing with that. Um, mindset. Okay, this is a, okay, they're all big to me, okay. Um, I will question every time I think the words, I should. You can should yourself to death, okay? The shoulds, the musts, it's I want, I choose. It's subtle, but it's very important. I will question every time I think I can't have that. Well, why can't you have it? Is there some internal food rule? If, if someone has brought a pecan pie to a dinner and you love pecan pie, don't go to that place where you think I can't have that because it's too many calories or whatever it is. If you're gonna really enjoy it, have the damn pecan pie, enjoy it, okay? Because otherwise what happens when we overly restrict is later when no one's looking, you're probably gonna eat half the pie or you're gonna eat something else to rebel against the fact that you didn't allow yourself to have it to begin with. Restriction leads to binging. Okay, I will avoid skipping meals and thinking about dieting. It's easy as it was one of my, in the 10 things that happens about food stress during the holidays is you're too busy. So you skip breakfast, you skip lunch and all of a sudden you're starving. That's just, you know, having a mindset that I, I will eat regularly and I'm not thinking about dieting during the holidays. That's just not constructive. I will focus on being present and mindful. I could do a whole, <laughs> I could do a whole hour on this, but um, be in the moment, enjoy the sights, the sounds, the smells, the people, be present and mindful. And then the last category is um, self-care. I will rest when I need to. I will look for opportunities to nourish myself. And I, I just want to stop on this one for a second because this is the, I said, I'm not going to tell you to have a smoothie every morning. So for me, when I say I look for opportunities to nourish myself, I know when things are crazy during the holidays and I might be having more dinners out or whatever than, or sweets than I might normally, I know I can, I love my smoothies and I can have a big nutritious smoothie in the morning and make sure I get that nourishment in for myself. Okay, this is another big one. I will maintain my normal routines as much as possible. If you're used to working out in the morning, try to keep that up. 
try to keep up, you know, whatever you do for breakfast or lunch. The more you can keep in your normal routines, the less you're going to feel overwhelmed and thrown off. I will hold space for my emotions. As, as a coach who works with emotional eating, again, I could spend six weeks talking about this one, but very important, feel your feelings. Don't push them away just because you're busy. Um, okay, uh, so I, was, I, I would ask, I was gonna do an exercise, but um, we're out of time, but just think about you know, what intention, even if it's just one, for the next couple of weeks, what intention can you set for this holiday season? And then instead of setting New Year's resolutions, think about setting New Year's intentions. Resolutions come from a place of, I'm broken, I need to fix it. New Year's intentions come from a place, as I said, of abundance and trying to bring positivity into your life. Um, and if we have time, if people could just type in the chat, we could look at it all later. Just one key takeaway you had from today, I'd really appreciate it. Hopefully I gave you something, something to think about. And lastly, I'll just say, I, as I mentioned earlier, I, I do complimentary um, consultations. Um, if you're interested in taking this conversation any further, any, any, any further, any further, um, uh, just hop on my calendar or shoot me an email. And thank you, uh, Lisa for, and Michelle for inviting me today. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. I wish we had more time, but I have recorded this for um, for folks that um, were unable to, um, to, to stay. And um, I, I always say to my clients um, is um, it's not about the stuff. It's about the um, it's about the emotion behind the stuff. Right. Um, could you, Marcy, stop sharing your screen? Oh, I, I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, please don't apologize. <laughs> I just don't know how to stop it. That's, that's I yeah. So, thank you for that. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I, you know, I, I sent Deb a direct message, which said, which is what I wanted to share with the group. It's not, it's not the, it's not the food. It's, it's, it's the emotion behind the food. And I think when we get a better handle on, um, I'm shoving cookie, sugar cookies in my face because I'm tired. I'm not hungry. I am tired and I am stressed and I am overwhelmed. And this is something to satisfy. It's trying to fill up something that I'm missing inside. And trust me, it wasn't sugar, butter, or, um, or something other delicious like that. So, um, thank you for sharing that. Um, Marcy does an amazing job. Um, and she was actually kind enough to do an event for us last spring, Marcy. So maybe we need to revisit this and, um, and, and talk about this for, for some programming um, moving forward as well. Um, I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. So a couple of people, I was like, God, did I miss them? But a couple of people had to drop the call. A couple of our amazing realtors, uh, Cindy Forte and uh, Katie Starr were on the call earlier this morning. If you are looking for an excellent realtor on the South Shore, please be sure to reach out to them. Um, and I know that their information is in the chat. And I am saving, I'm saving the chat. Okay, there we are. I'm saving the chat. I am ending the recording. Folks, you get to listen to me.